dear viewers i welcome you all for this video lecture on direct dyes at the end of the lecture you will be able to list the classification of dyes summarize the properties of direct dye explain the chemical structure of dyes describe the mechanism involved in dyeing finally you will be able to discuss the after treatment techniques in direct dyes now let us see the classification of dyes see coloring matters are classified into two categories one is dyes second one is pigment under the dyes it is further classified into two types one is natural dye the second one is synthetic dyes under the synthetic dyes it is further classified into two category one is water soluble dye the second one is water insoluble dye the example for water soluble dyes are direct dyes acid dyes basic dyes and reactive dyes example for water insoluble dyes are bad dye sulfur dye and dispersed dyes in grain dyes see there there are mineral colors oxidation colors and azoic colors these colors are comes under in grain dyes under pigments so there are four dyes are available one is bad pigment azoic pigment thiocyanin pigment and mineral colors now we will discuss about direct dyes direct dyes are one of the most versatile class of dye stuff applicable to cellulose wool silk and nylon fibers this dye has inherent substantivity for cotton and other cellulosic fibers dyeing takes place in the presence of an electrolyte such as sodium chloride and sodium sulfate the light fasteners of the direct dyed materials are poor to fairly good although some copper complex direct dyes have very good light fasteners various after treatments have to be carried out to improve the washing fasteners of the direct dyed material direct dyes generally does not meet today's more stringent washing fasteners requirements please look at the slide here we will be discussing about properties and structure of direct dyes direct dyes are sodium salts of aromatic sulfonic acids most of them contain an azo group as main chromophore direct dyes are water soluble dyes it is anionic in nature it needs electrolyte for exhaustion purpose dyeing process is carried out in alkaline condition generally applied to cellulosic fibers as well as protein fibers fasteners property is little bit average to poor it can be improved by means of after treatment techniques comparatively cheap in price so these are all the properties of the direct dyes now let us see the structure of direct dyes the structure contains aromatic rings and sulfonate groups attached to the rings please look at the chemical structure of the direct dyes please see the sodium salts of sulfonic uh, acids and the aromatic rings present in the direct dyes the chromophores are azo group oxane thiocyanin groups it is also responsible for the color of the product see according to the society of dyers and colorists the direct dyes are classified into three category a b c the class a belongs to self leveling direct dyes that means dyes having good leveling characteristics capable of dyeing uniformly when electrolyte is added at the beginning of the dyeing operation class b this is salt controllable direct dyes dyes having poor leveling fasteners and migration properties they can be controlled by the addition of electrolyte usually after the dye bath has reached the dyeing temperature they require relatively large amount of salt for the exhaustion purpose finally the class c dyes it is nothing but salt and temperature controllable dyes dyes shows relatively poor leveling and migration their substantivity increases by the controlling of temperature and salt during the dyeing process 
so salt as well as the temperature to be controlled during the dyeing of direct dyes now we will be discussing about the dyeing procedure involved in direct dyes the dyeing mechanism for the application of direct dyes are first one is adsorption second diffusion the third one migration takes place during the dyeing of cotton material with direct dyes set the dye bath with substrate at room temperature then add dye solution with the necessary axillaries and raise the temperature to 90 degrees celsius then run the bath for about 15 to 20 minutes and add salt according to the dye bath concentration run the dye bath for about 30 to 50 minutes at 90 degrees celsius to complete the dyeing cycle cool down the bath temperature to 60 to 70 degrees celsius drop the bath and rinse with hot water as well as with cold water finally after treatment has to be carried out to improve the washing fastness as well as the light fastness of the direct dyed material so the certain precautions to be carried out during dyeing of direct dyes with cotton material the precautions are all the chemicals should be measured very carefully during the process temperature should be increased gradually water should be added very carefully during the dyeing process time and temperature should be maintained during the process very sincerely then only you can achieve an effective dyeing and an effective process so here please look at the figure this shows how much time to be carried out during the dyeing process first uh, add the dye solution add the salt concentration add the temperature then during the after treatment the time taken for each and every process is explained very clearly in this figure now let us see the uh, dye bath variable such as dyeing temperature then dyeing time liquor ratio dye solubility and the presence of an electrolyte and uh, other auxiliaries these are all the influencing factors during the dyeing process so all the variables should be carefully uh, measured during the dyeing process so direct dyes can be applied either in a batch wise process using jigger machine jet dyeing machine or package dyeing machine or by means of a semi continuous process such as pad batch process or pad roll process or by a continuous method such as pad steam many direct dyes are suitable for application by combined with scouring process as well as with the dyeing process in this process the usual practice is to employ soda as a non ionic detergent however dyes containing amide groups are avoided because of the risk of alkaline hydrolysis direct dyes vary widely in their fastness property and staining effects on various fibers so now we will discussing about the washing fastness improvement as well as rubbing fastness improvement and light fastness improvement how this fastness to be improved after dyeing so treatment with cationic dye fixing agent treatment with formaldehyde treatment with copper sulfate and copper uh, salts treatment with cationic agent and copper sulfate in combination diastasization station and development treatment with cross linking agent or resins so by means of all these treatments we can improve the washing fastness light fastness and rubbing fastness of the direct dyed material either you can choose any one of the treatment to improve this fastness property now let us see the summary of this lecture so now we have discussed about the classification of dyes properties of direct dyes then we have also discussed the chemical structure of the direct dyes mechanism involved in direct dyeing finally we have discussed about the after treatment techniques thank you thank you for watching the lecture please subscribe this lecture good evening to all